Morning, everybody. Um, my name is Brendan Goodger, General Manager for Primary Care Improvement here at Central and Eastern Sydney uh, Primary Health Network. Uh, welcome to our night's uh, CBD session, uh, which is on Allied Health, building a healthy, digitally enabled business. I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional custodians and sovereign people of the land across which we work. I recognise their continuing connection to land, water and community and pay respect to elders past, present and emerging. I'd also extend that respect to any Aboriginal colleagues who may be joining us tonight. Tonight, um, what we'll be doing is our night to launch the Central and Eastern Sydney Primary Health Network Allied Health Engagement Strategy. And we're very honoured tonight to have uh, Peggy Huang, uh, who is an Allied Health member, a member of our uh, Central and Eastern Sydney board, and has been a really strong advocate uh, for Allied Health within our region. Uh, Peggy, uh, could I invite you to say a few words uh, and to launch the uh, assessment uh, Allied Health Engagement Strategy? Thank you, Brendan. I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. There's never been a time where allied health and the multidisciplinary team was more important. And I want to recognize the contributions and achievements of allied health in our area to get us to where we are today. There's a lot to look forward to in the future. The Central and Eastern Sydney PHN is investing additional resources into supporting allied health and the end result is better care for the patient and a healthier community. It will drive us closer to our vision of a healthier, of health for all, better health for all. As an allied health professional myself, it gives me great pleasure to launch the first Central and Eastern Sydney PHN allied health strategy. I want to thank the many contributors. So some of them include the Central and Eastern Sydney Allied Health Network Board, the clinical council, and of course the staff, particularly Brendan. Brendan spent a lot of time ensuring very wide, very thorough consultation, and also took the, the care to align our own strategy with that of the primary health care 10 year plan, the national 10 year plan. The feedback gathered during the consultations has been directly integrated into the strategy or noted for action and consideration. Your feedback is valued and it can certainly have impacts even beyond our Central and East Sydney PHN boundaries. For example, the idea of having the, a national chief allied health officer, which we now do have, came from this very PHN. Like all strategies and especially first strategies, this strategy is a starting point but we give our commitment to continued improvement and we'll work with you on that as well. The board will monitor progress and we look forward to engaging with you all the way. We look forward to hearing your challenges, for example, whether that be in digital health or managing long COVID. And of course, we look forward to hearing your success stories. And with that, I'd like to hand back to Brendan. Becky, thanks for your kind comments and also for your advocacy. Um, uh, I'd like to introduce John Petrosi, who's Chair of the Central and Eastern Sydney Allied Health Network. Uh, John, I wonder if you'd like to make a few uh, supporting comments. Thanks, Brendan. Yeah, and thanks, Peggy, um, for the introduction and launch of the um, Allied Health Engagement Strategy, um, which is produced by Central Eastern Sydney Primary Health Network. Um, I'd want to thank um, Dr. Brendan Goodger and his team um, for really initiating um, the idea of actually having an engagement strategy um, really for the idea that uh, allied health are an important um, contributor to the health of all Australians across Australia and strategizing a way where allied health can be strategically and integrated into um, primary care and through the PHN and engaged in a way that's meaningful um, is such an important um, I think achievement to, to, to roll out this, this launch today. And I, I thank everyone for being on the call today, um, whether you're an allied health uh, practitioner yourself or a stakeholder um, in, the air, in the area of health. Um, as um, Brendan um, spoke before, I'm not sure if he introduced himself, but his name's Dr. Brendan Goodger. He's the general manager um, for primary care and improvement um, for the Central Eastern Sydney PHN. 
and he'll be discussing what's actually involved or included in the strategy, um, which has been put together really over the course of the last 12 months, um, if not more, um, with the engagement um, and contribution of various stakeholders, including um, the board of Central Eastern Sydney Allied Health Network, um, which I encourage anyone in the region who's an allied health practitioner to be a member of, um, because you'll keep up to date with the actions and functions of the PHN, which serves you as an allied health practitioner in the region, as well as um, being able to deliver the, really the best care that you can to your patients, um, which will improve health outcomes. Um, after Brendan speaks today, we're gonna, also gonna have Yvonne Chong Costa and Linda Da Silva, who are the digital health and QI managers at um, Central Eastern Sydney Primary Health Network. Um, and at the end, we'll have some question and answers as well as an opportunity for you to put your hand up um, and or put your name actually onto a list to be one of the first to have to receive some support from the PHN, um, which actually is real support of real people at the PHN who will talk to you on the phone, or if not, um, visit your practice to provide some form of support. Um, so I'll just hand back to Brendan um, to discuss the Allied Health Engagement Strategy. Thank you. John, thank you for those comments. Um, so now you're probably wondering what's in the strategy, right? So tonight, what I'm going to take you through that. And then we've got our digital health experts and Yvonne and Linda, uh, who will explain around the digital health uh, component of the Allied Health Strategy. It's important to paint, to do a bit of scene painting here, some context. It's got to be, it's got to be recognised that Allot Health have not until uh, recently been fully recognised. They have been an unrecognised partner, uh, underrecognised partner, in in healthcare uh, for a long time, uh, and it's time they got the full recognition that they deserve. They are a core part uh, of the care teams at national, state and local levels. And in key policy discussions, the role of our health is becoming central. Uh, and we can see this in the appointment of the Commonwealth uh, Chief Allied Health Officer. We can see that in the increased uh, access to uh, MBS. We can see that in the 10 year primary healthcare plan. We can see that in a lot of the projects that the Commonwealth uh, providing to the, to the PHNs, that have got an allied health component to it. So again, allied health uh, is reaching uh, a really uh, important uh, critical mass in those really key policy discussions. When we talk about primary care, primary care is not only uh, general practice, it's also allied health. Allied health is diverse. It's got uh, a large number of different professions. I think at the last count, I think I got up to about 21 uh, different uh, allied health uh, professions. So it's diverse. It's also numerous. Uh, and by that, I mean, uh, within our region, we have somewhere between eight to 12,000 uh, allied health, eight to 12,000 allied health, uh, and 21 uh, different uh, allied health professions. So diversity, uh, and there's a lot of allied health. They're also using multiple clinical systems, but I think this is the most important thing in a way, which is they're working across all population groups, across the entire lifespan. So there's an incredible uh, level of expertise, commitment uh, amongst uh, allied health, uh, and also the opportunities to really drive a lot of good population health. Uh, through allied health. So again, the role of allied health is seen as now seen as crucial for driving person-centered integrated care models. And that is certainly where our PHN is orientating and wanting to support allied health. We think allied health are a really key player in that integrated care agenda, which is really about making sure that people get the right care at the right time at the right place. Next slide, please. Um, as I said, there are a large number of different allied health professions. Um, there is huge diversity, but there's also many different accreditation quality improvement frameworks that uh, allied health, different allied health professions have. We won't go into those tonight, but each uh, profession within allied health has a different sort of framework, a different model of, of accreditation. Uh, allied health also 
have not had that much support to become digitally enabled. Now we've been working with general practice for a long time, right? And so we like to think that general practice is pretty well digitally enabled. Yes, I know there are some improvements and we're working on that. But when you compare allied health to general practice, we know where the support has gone. It's gone uh, to general practice. Allied health have been a bit left behind in, in terms of the digital enablement. And so we're gonna try and change that. We're gonna try and stop that. Uh, we think there is a huge gain to be had uh, in really supporting allied health to really drive the use of digital health tools. Because given the investments that we've made in other parts of the healthcare system, it's unsurprising that allied health have not utilized the tools such as secure messaging, which is a, a prerequisite, I would think, uh, for good practice. Uh, nor the use of my health record, uh, and nor have they invested really heavily in clinical information systems. Or if they have, then they're not necessarily all connected up with each other. Next slide, please. So as a result, uh, allied health have traditionally uh, felt left out in health discussions and undervalued. Allied health have also felt a bit disconnected as a group in terms of that there's lots of different professions uh, uh, within allied health. Allied health may also have felt neglected by policymakers and have struggled, have certainly struggled uh, to get access to MBS funding. Now I know there's a lot of people who want to get access to MBS funding, but we think there's a good case for allied health to get greater access. And, you know, it must be admitted that allied health have not always felt really strongly connected uh, to their local PHN, okay? Our focus has been on supporting other primary care providers, but it's your turn, all right? Um, and for all those reasons, that's why um, last year, thank you to the advocacy of our different governance groups, our community council, our clinical council, people like Peggy, people like John. That's why we've developed uh, the Allied Health Engagement Strategy. We want this to take us forward. We want this to drive our future actions. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so in terms of developing this strategy, um, we took the approach that we need to ask a few questions. We needed to ask, what did Allied Health want? What were the expectations of GPs? What were the expectations of other healthcare professionals? So we did an online survey. We've got 86 responses. That's actually pretty good, by the way. And there was good diversity uh, amongst those responses. So we didn't all get them from Allied Health. It was a, a wide mixture. We also did six quite large focus groups with both our internal staff, but also with a number of external representatives. We also undertook targeted consultations with peak allied health groups, including the Indigenous Allied Health Australia. Now we put up uh, a draft sort of framework uh, to them. And we thought to ourselves, oh, we think we've got this you know, pretty right. They had a look at us in our Brendan, mate, you could improve this, this, and this. Here are some suggestions. And as Peggy said, they actually made a number of really good comments. So it forced us to revise our strategy. And what they did was it improved it. It made our strategy much more targeted, much more relevant to the practice of allied health. So those consultations are absolutely key. Can I say we had some uh, uh, really productive conversations with John, who is chair of the Central Eastern City Allied Health ne Network. We had discussed with him uh, and his board members. Uh, who can I say to you, weren't exactly shy in coming forward with suggestions, right? And I remember one meeting where they were pretty strong about making sure that allied health were, uh, that some of their needs were much more clearly articulated uh, in, in the strategy. And I remember actually John uh, actually sent me an annotated uh, summary of track changes in the strategy. Yes, John, I remember that. And it was actually incredibly helpful, right? We also had some really good discussions uh, with our uh, Central and Eastern Sydney PHN community and clinical councils and our CESPN uh, leaders network. Uh, we had a number of different um, uh, presentations uh, we gave to them because we wanted to make sure we got the feedback from a variety of different people and also the leaders in the field. 
So those conversations were incredibly helpful. Now I should say at this point, shouldn't I, that, um, you know, all care, no responsibility. Um, you know, it's on, it was on us to get it right. Um, they provided the feedback and hopefully we've been able to incorporate that, but that's been our responsibility. Next slide, please. So the strategy uh, at a glance, we wanted a strategy that was action orientated. We wanted a strategy that meant something. We wanted a strategy that was uh, capable of being implemented. We wanted a strategy that was capable of being measured. We wanted a strategy that I could then take back up to the board in six months and report on our progress. That's the sort of strategy we wanted. We also wanted a strategy finally uh, that was uh, that recognised the broader policy environment and make sure it was compatible uh, with what was happening at a state, but also at a national level. Um, so again, we've got 28 statements of action uh, that we end that we intend to undertake uh, over the next uh, three-year strategic planning cycle. I'll turn to the next slide now. For us, <coughs> partnerships uh, begin with relationships. We think that the relationships are fundamental uh, to the Allied Health Engagement Strategy. You simply can't have a strategy without relating it back to people and about trying to identify uh, and how to encourage that sense of collegiality, that sense of connection. So for us, we started with five key principles that how to build that relate, how to build those relationships with our light health. So the five principles are connection, which is we wanted to create a space where allied health and the PHN and other primary healthcare groups uh, can connect. So we want to create opportunities to share and learn. We also wanted to create that sense of belonging with allied health, as much as what we were able to generally have that sense of feeling valued, okay? Now, I'm an old, uh, well, it's true, slightly old uh, uh, allied health member. And I remember at times feeling quite isolated from the rest of the healthcare professions. So one of the key aspects of this, for me at least, was that sense of belonging, about feeling as if you're part of that allied health fraternity, feeling like you're part of that uh, that primary care workforce, right? And that you also have connections also to your colleagues and the acute care system. We also wanted uh, the core value about recognition. Recognition that, you've, that, you, that you're experts in the area that you do. Satisfaction was very important, which is around uh, knowing that you're doing good in terms of developing the systems that show the value of allied health. Uh, as I mentioned in some of the earlier slides, Sometimes allied health, well, let me take the positive. Allied health want to feel a bit more valued as part of the healthcare system. So uh, part of that is around um, getting their sense of worth in terms of helping them build and develop those systems that really demonstrate the value of what they're doing on a day-by-day -day basis. And also reward. Um, another really important principle uh, we think it's important for allied health to be rewarded for the work that they do. For allied health practices to be fit, resilient, and yes, financially viable. Um, so the reward aspect uh, comes in multiple domains, but to be fit, resilient, and viable is where we're going. So these are the goals to which we have committed. And no apologies for this, they are ambitious. But what we decided, and again, with the support of the Central and Eastern City Board, we decided we had to be aspirational in order to make a change. And that's, and we're taking a stand in the strategy. Next slide, please. So what's in the strategy uh, beyond those sort of five key connection points? Firstly, uh, we need to improve the quality of data on allied health and understand the makeup of allied health providers and where and how they practice in the tools that they're using. There's still a lot that we don't know about allied health. I mentioned here before, I think that we've got eight to 12,000 
push me, could be 13,000 for all I know, uh, allied health in our region. So that's a pretty wide band. We don't exactly know how many allied health professions there are in our region. We don't know where they practice. Uh, we don't necessarily know which uh, client groups they focus on. And nor do we know some of the tools that they're using in terms of their, their practice tools. So for us, one of the really key first steps, and it's a big step, uh, is to try and improve the quality of data on allied health. Uh, we've got about 609 general practices in our region. We've got a pretty good understanding of them. 609 general practices, eight to 12,000 allied health. You can, see, you can see that we've set ourselves an ambitious goal. But again, the first step is trying to improve the quality of that data. We also want to target and personalize education sessions for allied health. So a cornerstone of our offering that will be used to increase engagement between allied health and our PHN and other healthcare providers will be improved CPD events. More relevant, uh, uh, more topical, more related to your practice for allied health. And I must acknowledge Yvonne, who's about to follow me as the speaker on this, uh, who's the manager of digital health and quality improvement, who's actually taught me a lot. What we need to do critically is that we need to demystify and normalize digital health in, uh, in allied health. So we really need to make sure that, that digital health tools are embedded within allied health practice. The four key areas that we're going to focus on is around the clinical practice systems. We think that's absolutely key. Uh, you know, the best practices, the medical directors of the GP world, and I know there's light versions of that in allied health and other clinical information systems, but it's about building up their capacity. It's about, it's about embedding their use uh, into uh, allied health practice. Also, the use of secure messaging is, we think is also fundamental for protecting confidentiality and for sharing information. It's the standard now that GPs use. Uh, it's what GPs expect. It's what other referrers expect. We strongly encourage Allied Health uh, to take on secure messaging. Also, the use of My Health Record is a incredible tool at improving uh, person-centered care to deliver that, the right care at the right time and the right place. It's about uh, how can you contribute as a active care team member. Uh, and of course, telehealth that is pretty much revolutionized uh, how we uh, deliver healthcare in terms of its convenience, in terms of its access, uh, in terms of the speed by which it can be delivered. So those are the four key areas by which we're really trying to promote uh, uh, digital health uh, amongst allied health clinicians. Next slide, please. We also wanna link uh, the allied health disciplines to our wonderful health pathways. Uh, we've got uh, two health pathways teams in uh, Central East Sydney region, Sydney Local Health Pathways and South East Sydney Local Health Pathways. In case they're watching, you're both really good, right? Um, but they are wonderful resources that's used uh, by general practice. But increasingly what we're wanting to do though, is to make sure that the knowledge of allied health is referenced uh, within those pathways and that GPs also get access to them and also increasingly uh, allied health as well. So for this for us is, a, is an area of growth that we're looking to try to expand. We also want to um, advocate for the use of various quality improvement frameworks. Uh, one of the really key goals that we set ourselves and we set ourselves for all primary care providers, by the way, is about how to drive quality improvement in, in primary care. Allied health is no different. Allied health have to be part of that quality improvement table. They have to sit at that table as well. So one of the things we are going to be doing is trying to support allied health when they undertake various quality improvement initiatives. Okay. Also, of course, the use of patient reported measures. Uh, we think it's important to enable clinicians, a lot of health clinicians, had to get feedback on how they're providing care and, and how your patients or clients or consumers 
are experiencing that care. And Peggy's alluded to correctly that we are hopefully going to be able to make some extra resources available to support our life health. There's no point having a strategy if we don't resource it. Uh, we've got two generally wonderful, highly skilled practice support and digital health teams who work closely together, different skill sets, but they work incredibly closely together. And can I just say, I think these guys are some of the best uh, best amongst the PHNs. Now I'm biased, of course, but they're incredibly good, right? They're also uh, really committed to allied health. They're wanting to take on something new. They're wanting to take on a challenge. They're wanting to make a difference. And they see allied health as being a really fundamental part of the healthcare system that, in which they can make uh, quite a lot of change and really work in partnership. I guess that's really their strong role. Is about working in partnership. And it's also about getting access uh, to increased levels of resources. And all the tips and tricks about, you know, um, about how you manage your practice. I have to say to you, the practice support team are pretty clever about assisting in areas such as infection control, assisting in areas such as accreditation, right? Assisting in areas such as practice management. And then we've got digital health, who move on, if you don't mind me saying so. Very friendly, the nerds, um, to some extent, who are extremely good at connecting people up in a digital health sense, who can cut through some of the jargon, who can cut through some of the systems and really help you get connected quickly and efficiently. So there's not so much downtime uh, within your allied health practice. Again, we are very, very fortunate uh, to have the practice support and digital health teams. And so what we're gonna do is make them available uh, to support you on that. And that'll be done via face-to-face uh, -face visit if need be, but increasingly we're doing a lot of our consultations now uh, virtually through Teams, and that's working incredibly well. But again, we do have that capacity to offer either, and also to support you with appropriate documentation. Next slide, please. Now, as Peggy mentioned, and she's on the board, so I better be a little bit careful. I've often to uh, report back to the board every six months on our progress. And of course, the board said, well, Brendan, you better have some really strong indicators in the digital health plan, in the uh, allied health plan. And so what we've, what we've set up is this. We've said, how are we going to measure success? Well, it's about the number of allied health uh, practices who are using or accredited and we're using a quality improvement framework from a recognized professional body. We're not going to be prescriptive about that. We're not doing that. What we're saying is we're simply encouraging the use of a quality improvement approach, a quality improvement framework that is recognized. It's also about the use of standard clinical practice guidelines and having policies in place, right? That really sets you up for sustainability and improved um, patient or client care to try to encourage the systematic collection uh, and the use of patient reported measures, to use really robust information systems uh, for clinical and patient-based data. We think that is the foundation in many respects of good practice, whether you're allied health or whatever professional group. And again, we've mentioned digital health. We also want to see allied health uh, participating in assessment delivered events, uh, such as around quality improvement. And we really want to try and scale that up. But also on events uh, such as these, which are around uh, continuing uh, professional uh, development. Those are the goals or the indicators uh, that we set ourselves. Those are, what, those are what we'll be assessed on in terms of reporting back to the board. Now we have got three years to achieve this. Um, and as I said to John in a private conversation today, and John, I hope you don't mind me sharing it, which is that we've got a long way to go with allied health. We're starting from a modest base, um, but we've got three years, but we've made a start and we intend to increase our levels of commitment to allied health, allied health to really drive that change process. Now, I think that might be the last slide, Bertha. Can you just, yes. So we might hold questions. And perhaps uh, if I can uh, hand over now to my colleague, Yvonne, uh, from our digital health and quality improvement team. Thanks, Yvonne.
Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us tonight. And thank you, Brendan, Peggy, as well as John. I'm just going to share my screen. And hopefully you can actually see this. Okay. So I'm here to actually talk to you about digital health and some of the tools that Brendan has been speaking about, predominantly telehealth, my health record and secure messaging. We did mention clinical systems as well. There's quite a large array of clinical systems available. Um, and I think that's actually something we can definitely help you with, but that's also a choice that, um, that will be, need to be made by yourselves if you want to transition to a clinical system. So I'm going to start off with this definition. This definition from the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare has been updated to reflect digital health in its current day. Over the past three years, digital health technology and its capabilities has expanded exponentially from the mindset of a good to have to a necessity. Health systems across the world have been required to adapt and adopt to the digitization of clinical and operational responses for the COVID-19 pandemic, where digital health has been key in providing innovative solutions to mitigate the effects of COVID and gain operational efficiencies. CESPIN's recently revised Digital Health Strategic Plan 2022 to 25, which will soon be up on our website, capitalizes on the accelerated digital uptake of telehealth, electronic prescriptions, secure messaging, and the My Health Record system. CESPIN's overarching intent of the Digital Health Plan is to normalize the use of digital health amongst healthcare providers to provide the digital capability for allied health, improve virtual care models in aged care facilities, and strengthen linkages in primary care. On screen are the seven priority outcomes for Australia's national digital health strategic plan. After nationwide consultations, the revised version will be released in June this year. Developed by the Australian Digital Health Agency, CESPIN and all PHNs work closely with the agency across all these digital health activities. Before we begin to talk about specific digital health technologies that could support allied health, I wanted to give you some context to the number of healthcare providers we have in our region. Brendan's already alluded to some of those figures. We actually have 608 general practices that equates to 2,100 GPs and over 600 nurses. There's 452 pharmacies equating to 1,700 pharmacists. So far, we've been working with um, 1645 specialists in the region and we continue to scope that, but we believe that there's close to three to 4,000 in our region. And there's a growing number of allied health in our region of which we have not fully connected with. So on this slide, you'll actually see, uh, this is a snapshot from our strategic plan, but we're actually a very large PHN, um, quite a lot of um, health networks and local health districts. Um, and also residential aged care. So why go digital health? Following on from Brendan's introduction to this webinar and his overview of the, of the actual engagement strategy, I'd like to talk about the opportunities digital health can offer allied health in increasing participation, creating, creating greater professional and personal connections with other local healthcare providers and your patients. We know that the pandemic has been a catalyst for a significant shift in the way we live, work and interact. And this is no different in the way our health system is changing and how we are now required to deliver health services. Essentially, digital health technologies and applications are paving the way and achieving the once desired terms of virtual care, coordinated care, multidisciplinary care. From my own experience in being with the PHN for the past four years, our work in digital health has expanded from supporting GPs to now supporting and enabling digital health in pharmacies, specialists, aged care, and now allied health. Allied health is the missing piece of the puzzle when it comes to having a connected health system. We want to support the profession by bringing you into the fold and avoid the risk of the profession falling behind digitally. For allied health, dig digital solutions can potentially 
help you incorporate a hybrid model of working face-to-face -face and with telehealth. On this point, consumer data is telling us that people expect to be given the option of telehealth for consultation, of which I will expand on this a bit later. Other reasons to consider digital include improved collaboration with other healthcare providers, improved continuity of care for patients, increase the number of referrals to your practice. For these three points, digital enabled practices are able to view, send and share information and generate leads. Lastly is the economic benefits gained from systems efficiency from less administrative work. From a 2022 CSIRO paper on early adaption of allied health during pandemic in Australia, insights into the impact of COVID highlight the fact that many allied health professions have suffered due to the nature of your work being predominantly face-to-face, -face, in close proximity or hands-on with patients, allied health are finding it difficult to meet the patient needs, placing a strain on the perceived satisfaction on service quality in the patient setting. So that's why it's important to actually go digital. I'm now going to talk to you about the three digital systems that we are recommending for allied health to consider, to connect up to. Not all allied health practices are the same. Therefore, the uptake of these technologies will, will need to suit how your, your business runs and your workflows. We have dedicated members in digital health that can help you navigate which systems would suit your needs best, most of the time, that does not mean adopting all of these systems at once. We are actually here to support you and to tailor a solution to your needs. So on the note of telehealth, telehealth is having a consultation with a healthcare provider by phone or by video call. In November 2020, Federal Minister Hunt announced that telehealth would become a permanent fixture of Australia's healthcare system. This was to ensure greater flexibility for patients and doctors and for the delivery of healthcare, allowing GPs, specialists and allied health professionals to continue to consult with their regular patients by phone or online. We have over 95% of GPs and specialists using telehealth to connect to their patients as part of their practice. Healthcare providers in the region use a number of different platforms in telehealth Many are integrated in their clinical systems, some are fit for purpose, and others use platforms such as Zoom. COVID-19 has seen a shift to virtual care. According to a 2021 PwC study across Australia, virtual healthcare services jumped from 40% prior to the pandemic to 54%, with the most popular virtual communication tool, phone call. Three quarters of Australian consumers said they are open to interacting with healthcare systems on digital platforms and the use of virtual health services even after returning to in-person care. And the study also said that Australians aged between 25 to 44 had the highest acceptance of continuing the use of virtual care services in the future, and that was 94%. It's also important to note at this point that hospitals in the region are rapidly developing and expanding their services around telehealth into virtual models of care. RPA Virtual has a strong presence in this space. And the Southeast Sydney LHD has recently announced a virtual healthcare strategy to accompany the opening of their new integrated acute services building at Prince of Wales Hospital later this year. Off the back of this, PHNs are being funded by the Commonwealth to enable virtual care across CESPN 661 RACFs in the region. Based on this information and the direction to which the health industry is moving, Allied Health should incorporate telehealth as part of their practice. Not only is there expectation from consumers and patients that a hybrid model of consultation should be available, but more and more healthcare providers are interacting via telehealth for multidisciplinary care. CESPN's work in the area of telehealth predominantly has been to support the uptake and usage of the Health Direct video call platform. This platform basically is funded by the government for primary and non-primary care services. These include GPs, mental health services, aged care, and allied health. 
Recently, we have been told by the Health Direct that CESPIN has the highest number of healthcare providers using the service nationally. On screen is, um, could be quite small for you to see, but it's actually the different video platforms that are available. And obviously there's video chat, things like Skype, business video conferencing like Zoom, and purpose-built health video consult consulting, which is like Health Direct. Some of the key benefits of using Health Direct platform include meeting the Australian standards for government information and cybersecurity, where there's no digital trail or patient digital footprint left behind on the platform. All patient data is purged from the platform post consult. There's a one single door entry URL per health service provider requiring no pins or special access or URLs. There's also a secure online waiting area, creating a private video room for the patients waiting. There's no opportunity that exists for others to access a call underway, nor will another patient or clinician accidentally join the consultation. Each session is media encrypted for video voice traffic end to end between the browsers. And we're actually offering, as I said, we can actually sign you up to this pretty much immediately and it's free of charge. Now I'm going to talk about the My Health Record system of which you may or may not know of, but I will give you further like intricate details about what it actually contains because it is expanding. So the My Health Record is an online summary of your key health information. For healthcare providers, you can access to view and add to patients' health information. What does it actually contain? Well, it contains clinical documents such as discharge summaries, shared health summaries and event summaries, MBS and PBS items, pathology and diagnostic reports. It's linked to the Australian Immunisation Register. There's an opportunity where you can actually add advanced care planning documents, there's specialist letters and referrals, and there's input from the patients on emergency contacts, allergies and other medications such as herbal supplements. The My Health Record is constantly being updated and enhanced. And therefore it's a system whereby a lot more healthcare providers are actually tapping into and seeing value, particularly from COVID. As of March, 2022, there were 23.3 million Australians with My Health Record. The use and uptake from healthcare providers and consumers increased consistently during the pandemic, particularly with the linkage to air. In New South Wales alone, there are 7.37 million people with the My Health Record, making it the highest number of records for a state or te te territory nationally. On the right-hand side, are the usage of My Health Record nationally. So you can actually see that quite a few pharmacies, GPs and public hospitals are automatically uploading discharge summaries. And what is also significant and a lot of work that we are doing at the PHN is getting specialists connected. In our region, we have 493 general practices out of 548 with clinical systems connected. There's 427 pharmacies, 192 specialists so far, and 13 RACFs. So there's quite a lot of work for us to do with the RACFs in our region. This slide also from March, 2022, shows documents uploaded and documents viewed. The My Health Record can be accessed via online portal, so standalone or via compatible clinical system. The online portal enables you to view, but not upload to the My Health Record. The real benefits for Allied Health in having access to the My Health Record including, include accessing patient information prior to face-to-face -face consultations and supporting telehealth consultations. There's reduced administrative work in chasing documentation, such as discharge summary information, specialist letters, and finding details of other healthcare providers that are looking after your patient. There's an opportunity to view, immu view immunization records, pathology, and diagnostic reports. As you can see from this, there's quite a few um, documents now being uploaded and also being viewed. So if you look at the public hospitals and the GPs, that's significantly on the rise. And I think one of the biggest criticisms of the My Health Record when it was first introduced 
was that nothing was in there. But you will find nowadays that a lot more healthcare providers and a lot more uploads are actually happening. One of the big challenges for Allied Health at the moment is the number of compatible clinical systems there are to the My Health Record system. CESPEN is strongly advocating to the Australian Digital Health Agency to support more allied health clinical systems to have this integration. So I think this is a piece of work um, that will happen um, and it needs advocacy from us and from many other people. Um, and I can, have, I can tell you that with other clinical systems, there has been funding or industry offers, should I say, provided to the software vendors to actually update and make their softwares compliant. So I'm hoping that will actually happen sooner rather than later for allied health professionals. Now going to move on to secure messaging. Secure messaging is a solution that safely and securely delivers messages between healthcare organizations. Using a secure messaging solution is foundational for a safe, seamless, secure, and confidential information sharing across all systems. Secure messaging enables you to send and receive referrals, specialist reports, pathology results, radiology results, hospital discharge summaries, and allied health consultation reports. When it comes to comparing secure messaging and email, there are a number of benefits, including increased privacy and security, a single channel through which referrals and correspondence are sent or received, improved coordination and care and service integration, reduced overheads and more cost-effective delivery through the reduction of paper correspondence, postage costs and time efficiencies gained from scanning and faxing. On screen is the secure messaging versus email and most of this is to do with privacy and data breaches. Emails are quite easily sent to the wrong recipient, can be accessed through ported devices, can actually be forwarded without notification and are vulnerable to intercept. To give you some context about the users in our region, GPs, there are about 95% of our GPs using a secure messaging solution. There are over 1,100 private specialists using secure messaging and in fact, there are actually 644 allied health already using secure messaging in our region. This screen just gives you an um, update as to how it actually works. Essentially, it is actually an encrypted point-to-point -point messaging services that basically acknowledges a sending and a receiving with a notification. It gives you access to a broader range of referring practitioners because of there's an online directory. It improves clinical decision-making due to right information being able at the right point of time and point of care. And there's improved coordination of care as a result of improved communication between healthcare providers. And lastly, there's traceability and tracking of the information. There are four main secure messaging providers. These are HealthLink, Argus, Medical Objects, and ReferralNet. Many of these can be used within conformant clinical software. For each of these products, there is a version that can be used without conformant clinical software. At the moment, the different products are unable to talk to each other, but the Australian Digital Health Agency is actually working on that to make it interoperable. That means like an Optus phone with a, with a Telstra vendor, it will mean that one day you can actually send a message across to an Optus phone and to a Telstra phone. At the moment, this is actually not enabled. Over 90% of GPs and specialists use secure messaging in the region. For Allied Health, we recommend signing up to HealthLink as HealthLink is the most widely used provider amongst GPs and specialists in the region. And it's also the cheapest. There's no setup fee and there is actually no fee whatsoever to receive only when you send. So on screen, I've actually got, it's probably quite small for you to view, but there's a comparison table um, that, that compares all four of them for you. I'm now going to pass this on to my colleague, Linda Silva, who will actually talk you through a real case study as she 
is one of my team members who actually does connect allied health to any one of those three systems or all of it. Um, so I will pass that on to Linda and Linda, I'll actually change the slides for you. Thank you, Yvonne. So I'd like to share this case study with you uh, to demonstrate the day-to-day -day benefits of digital health and how we collaborate with allied health professionals. So Emily is a psychologist uh, working part-time. She has seen a shift to virtual care and conducts many consultations via telehealth. Her practice is paper-based and she does not employ an, an admin support person. Uh, she came to us uh, seeking efficiencies uh, in her workflow to expand her business and to understand where the future was going in the digital health space. She identified two areas where she was seeking improvement. Uh, Emily often works as a part of a team care arrangement and having easier access to reports from other providers involved in her client's care would mean less time spent on the phone chasing documents. She relies on fax and mail to communicate with referring GPs, uh, which means keeping track uh, that her reports are received on time and making phone calls to confirm. Emily also finds that she uh, now has to chase a lot of uh, referrals for patients that she sees via telehealth, as they can't just hand over their paper copy to her. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so as a first step, we connected Emily with uh, the My Health Record system via the National Provider Portal. Uh, it's a web-based access to My Health Record for providers without a software or with software which is not yet conformant with My Health Record. We used her existing PRODA account to submit a registration for her practice to participate in my health record. And she now can view and download clinical documents at any time before or during the consultation. Uh, Emily sees the day-to-day -day benefits of this resource um, as many of her clients come to her with complex mental health needs. She finds that she can get better insight into the key events related to their mental health and therapies they tried in the past and without needing to rely on the client's memory. She also appreciates easy access to specialist letters and discharge summaries, which would otherwise be very difficult to obtain. Overall, she's able to provide better coordinated care. Next slide, please. Uh, and next, uh, we registered Emily with a secure messaging vendor you know, to save her time when communicating with other clinicians and giving her peace of mind. She was seeking that her clinical documents arrived uh, to the int intended recipient uh, by using the uh, automatic acknowledgement function of secure messaging. We started the process by compiling a list of top 10 healthcare providers Emily works with. So this would be GPs who refer to her and specialists involved in her client's care. But then we checked secure messaging directories and were able to find all of the providers on HealthLink. Uh, this is uh, because, as Yvonne mentioned earlier, they have the largest coverage in the Central and Eastern Sydney uh, area. Um, as Emily doesn't have a software yet, uh, we have selected a web-based encrypted service offering both send and receive function for an annual fee. Uh, but before we went ahead, we compared the cost of the subscription uh, with Emily's current operational expenses uh, that would relate to post, stationary and fax and uh, calculated future savings we were expecting in this area. For Emily, being connected also means being visible to other healthcare providers. She has received several referrals from a GP who had previously never referred to her, uh, 
because the G uh, GP was able to look her up in the online di directory they are both on. <clears throat> Next slide, thank you. We continue working with Emily and uh, our next step is to shortlist uh, three uh, software products to trial. Uh, she has improved her digital skills and gained confidence by using web-based solutions and is ready to introduce clinical software into her work. My Health Record and Secure Messaging are now part of Emily's daily workflow and I'd like to share her feedback with you on this last slide as well as the GP who refers to her. And uh, the last quote I included is from the owner of an allied health clinic uh, explaining their reasons to set up secure messaging for all provider, providers in their practice. So this concludes my case study. Thank you, Vivo. Back to you. Thanks, Linda. My last slide is actually just some resources and next steps for you. Um, on this slide, I've actually got the Health Direct video call application form by which you can click on this link, um, send in the form. It's only a one pager and we can actually set that up. You send it back to us. Um, there's also a digital health toolkit for Allied Health through ARPA. Um, and that actually does cover all that we've talked about today in this presentation. Uh, if you want online simulation and training for the My Health Record, there's actually the link there for the My Health, um, sorry, My Health Record online training through the Digital Health Agency. And lastly, there's MBS Items, um, the fact sheet for Allied Health multidisciplinary care case conferences. Further to this, and as you've heard from Linda, we have a dedicated team in digital health that can support you. And we can be reached through our email address of digitalhealth at cespin.com.au. And that's it for me. So I'll hand it back to you, Brendan. Yes. Look, thank you, Yvonne uh, and Linda. Uh, great presentations um, and really informative. And I think it demonstrated a really great knowledge of all the different uh, uh, digital health tools that can be enabled to support allied health. Look, Yvonne, I've got a question for you. Uh, and you expected this, didn't you, I think, which is, but I'm stealing it uh, from someone uh, who's posed a question, which is, how long will the video platform be free of charge for Allied Health? So the funding has been quite um, stopped. Well, it hasn't stopped start, but the funding has actually been consistent through COVID-19. It was introduced because of COVID-19 for both GPs as well as allied health, primary and non-primary care. Um, the actual funding is till June this year. However, we do believe that will, it, it will continue to be extended. Um, so far, it's been extended about three times. And what I've heard along the grapevine is that if you are signed up, they're not likely to take that away um or charge you for it so that's why i encourage all allied health and even gps to sign up for this now i've got a follow-up question Yvonne, if i can which is and it's one of my own um which is this that i don't know about you but sometimes i have trouble actually working out you know connecting up my tv at times all right and i'm just worried about for allied health a new allied health practitioner is just starting out and they're saying, well, I want to become digitally enabled. They like Brendan, they can't probably work their TV that well. Uh, what can they expect uh, from the digital health team? What can you do to support a practitioner who's really feeling very nervous about the digital health journey, but wants to start? So what can you do? And what are, the, what are some of the, the top couple of tips you got off of them? I think the first thing with any of our consultations, and this is not just for allied health, but it's actually across the board with our healthcare providers. As I mentioned, we actually have supported GPs, pharmacies, specialists, is to actually understand your business or what your goals are, just like the case study. Um, it's to actually understand your workflows, which is very important. We understand the fact that uh, allied health uh, can be quite transient. They actually do move around. They can work for aged care services. They can work in private practice. Um, they can work at home. 
they can work in an office, they can work part of a clinic. So it's important for us to actually understand the setting. And then what we will do is we'll tailor um, solutions for you. And as I mentioned in my presentation, it can be overwhelming to, to look at all of this and go, I need all of this. But to be honest with you, it'd be great if you did. However, there's obviously a starting point. And once you become comfortable with one digital health solution, then you'll probably adapt and adopt further. I think the most important thing here is to get started, at least try something out um, and give it a go. Well, look, I think that great tips. Now, look, we're going to continue uh, for about another five minutes or so, but if you've got any questions, uh, then don't be shy. Pop them into the chat. Now, I've got a question for also Linda, perhaps, um, um, which is, Linda, how long would it take me to get, to get connected up to secure messaging? Because that, to me, seems really fundamental. It's what GPs are using. How long would it take me from starting out not doing it to actually getting a system in place? Oh, with the web-based uh, system, that would be one business day. So, wow. yeah, so we can meet at 9 a.m. and by the end of the business day, you can send your first secure message. Well, I didn't quite realize that myself. That seems incredible. So that on one, one business day, mm -hmm. right, we can get an adult health practitioner connected up to secure messaging. Well, here's my challenge back to all of the people on Allied Health tonight. Um, pop your details into the chat, because that seems like a pretty good offer to me. So I think what we're saying is one business day and we'll connect, get you connected up to secure messaging, which is in a way a really fundamental uh, platform. So, uh, so pop your details into the chat and uh, take up the, the PHN challenge of a one day connect, all right? <laughs> How much does it cost with secure messaging? Uh, it doesn't cost anything to receive if you would like to try the workflow and just put your name on the map, which is the online directory, uh, to yep. be visible to others. And uh, at the moment, um, there is a subscription model where a part-time uh, provider would pay $206 a year. So, uh, and, uh, and there is no setup cost, there is no volume cost, so it's just a one-off for the year, uh, and uh, the full-time practitioner would pay $412. Okay. Thank you for that, Linda. Now, a question for John. We've heard a lot around the Central and Eastern Sydney Ella Health Network, um, but what does the network actually do? Thanks, Brenton. Um, so the Central and Eastern Sydney Allied Health Network is, um, it's, it's actually made up by a board of um, very engaged allied health practitioners who work in the region. And um, our, our main job really is to advocate for allied health um, practitioners to the PHN. Um, we're a small not-for-profit company, but we're also a member network of the um, Central Eastern Sydney Primary Health Network. And really our job is to advocate um, and advocate we, we do um, very often. Um, and I'd actually just like to mention all the allied health practitioners that we do advocate for. Um, we're not specifically advocating for the ones that are most popular, but all of them really. And they include um, Chinese medicine practitioners, occupational therapists, optometrists, um, osteopaths and chiropractors, pharmacists, physiotherapists, podiatrists, psychologists, um, and they're all regulated by APRA. Um, and then there's self-regulated allied health professions as well, which include art therapists, audiologists, dietitians, exercise physiologists, um, genetic counselors, music therapists, orthoptists, um, prosthetists, uh, rehab uh, counselors, social workers, as well as speech pathologists. And I hope I didn't miss anybody. I apologize if I did. Um, but we work on, on all of your behalves. Um, to advocate for your, really what it is that, that you need to deliver better services um, to your patients, clients and, uh, and consumers. Um, there's about 200,000 allied health professions across Australia um, and it's a growing number. And um, like you said before, Brendan, there's about 14,000 allied health professions practicing in the central Eastern Sydney region, which is a considerable number. 
And I'm really heartened to, to know that there's a strategy that's, um, that's got something to actually do in terms of providing a meaningful integration of allied health professions to the PHN, um, as well as um, other primary health providers um, that we communicate to on a daily basis, including GPs and specialists. Um, so it's a very exciting time for allied health. Um, and I encourage uh, any, any practitioners on, on the call at the moment or any of your colleagues that you think aren't uh, members of Central Eastern Sydney Allied Health Network to become an annual member, um, which is only about $110 per year. And we'll provide almost a conduit or a funnel between the PHN um, and all of their good um, goodies, I was gonna say, but CPD webinars that are relevant for allied health professionals. Um, policies and advocacies that the PHN is doing on your behalf. We'll provide that information um, regularly. And I think also just becoming a member or subscribing to um, the network, you'll also receive uh, weekly newsletters and emails from the PHN informing you about the sort of um, initiatives that are undergoing in your region. Um, and yes, there are a lot for GPs, um, but there are a lot for allied health. And tonight, um, Yvonne and, um, and Linda have really um, provide a beautiful overview of what's available today um, or tomorrow by having a conversation with the staff at the PHN. And um, I'll use myself as an example. We were not um, connected with secure messaging up until probably about mm, 12 months ago, where Linda talked us through it, set us up, and it did only take about a day to set it up for our practitioners at the clinic. Um, yes, it's a paid for service, the, um, the secure messaging, but you know, taking it into context of um, other running costs, it, it has saved us considerable time and effort compared to scanning, faxing, losing mail, all those sort of things. And we know that the messages and our reports have gotten to the GPs or allied health practitioners that we intended to send it to in a secure way um, that's compliant. Um, so yeah, it's an exciting time. It's a three year um, strategy that the PHN has. And like you said before, Brendan, it's small steps, but there are some really good steps ahead of us. Thank John, you. can I just say, I can certainly vouch for the advocacy of the Central and Eastern City Allied Health Network, uh, being the recipient of such uh, advocacy efforts. Uh, you are actually extremely effective. Um, look, we've got a question here, which is around uh, prescriptions, Yvonne, perhaps. Um, uh, does secure messaging work with prescriptions um, instead of sending the facts? Um, prescriptions, well, can I say that um, when you're talking about prescriptions, are you talking about pharmacies using prescriptions? Yes, absolutely. So the question is, being a pharmacist, we're always having GP sending us prescriptions through their favourite but much dreaded fax service, which we're trying to access the fax. Does the secure messaging work for this type of communication? That's the question. The answer to that is yes, it actually does work. Um, it would be good to see more uh, pharmacists actually adopting secure messaging as well, of which I don't believe there are that many. But yes, it would definitely work in that situation and work as well, and it would be a most certainly a more secure way of sending a prescription as well. So, but I can I also say that um, prescriptions have electronic prescriptions nowadays, which means that you won't be required to use a secure messaging solution, or hopefully won't be able to use. A secure messaging solution because it's actually through electronic prescriptions, which is a QR code um, or an email to the provider, uh, to the patient or to the carer of that patient. So I think your message tonight, Yvonne, is get on board. E-prescriptions, it's the future. Absolutely. Now, one other question, and I couldn't answer this, but I'm not a very ticky person because obviously I have trouble with my TV. But can you use HealthLink to send secure messages to non-health people or only to people registered themselves with HealthLink? No, they would actually have to be. Um, so it's point-to-point -point secure delivery, which means that that other person needs to actually have um, the same HealthLink provider. So as I was explaining before, at the moment, if you are with HealthLink, you can actually send a message or receive a message from another health link um, provider or person who has that. Same with Argus, same with uh, medical objects. 
what the Australian Digital Health Agency is actually working on is to make that interoperable, which means that you hopefully will be able to send a health link referral through to an Argus referral. And that's something that they have been working on and hopefully will come to fruition sooner rather than later. But at the moment, it's only from vendor to vendor. It has to be the same vendor. And the reason why we've actually recommended HealthLink for allied health in the region is because 95% of GPs and specialists are all using HealthLink. Great. Thanks, Yvonne. Now, Peggy, I've got a message. Uh, I've got a question for you. Uh, you're not getting away tonight. You're on this panel as well. All right. Are you ready? Which is, how can... We know that allied health, we want to try and improve our engagement with allied health. How can allied health get, in, get involved with the PHN? Um, how do we get more allied health engaged with the PHN, all right? That's a great question. And there are many ways you can do this. And John's already covered. One way is to be a part of the Central and Eastern Sydney Allied Health Network as a member. And if you wanted to take that even further and you wanted to um, get more engaged or use it as a chance to give back even, uh, you could look into being uh, a volunteer or um, apply for a board director role with the Allied Health Network. Um, and no board experience is, is essential and it's something that will, you know, you could get, um, you could develop um, uh, if you have, um, been successful in applying for one of those board positions. Um, but I, I believe that any, anyone can also subscribe to the weekly newsletters as well. And when you get those newsletters, definitely take the opportunity to go through that uh, weekly newsletter and find more opportunities to get more, more engaged. Uh, you can also just contact one of us directly and share with us your issues or your ideas um, and or, or your questions about how to get more engaged. And it really does depend on your own practice and your, your own needs and your own interest as well in terms of where, but Allied Health Network is definitely a really good way, a really good way to start. Um, you can also um, come to some CPD events. I think that's how I, I started, just coming up, coming to a CPD event. Some of them, for example, digital, digital health, um, they tend to be open to all people um, that aren't people that aren't members as well. Um, that, so that's the main ideas. John, was there anything you wanted to add? Thanks, Peggy. Um, no, they're the main things. I think you've covered them. Um, I think my journey was um, actually speaking to you initially. Uh, you were the chair of the um, Allied Health Network. And uh, then I just saw what was out there in terms of um, opportunities and services available from the PHN. And the weekly newsletter that comes from the PHN is really useful. Uh, and it, it sort of expanded my mind as to actually what was going on in the primary health um, care sector, uh, particularly GP practices, but you know, allied health um, has been scoped out in the um, newsletters as well. So, um, I'm pretty sure that subscription to the newsletters available on the Central and Eastern Sydney Primary Health Network um, webpage somewhere. Um, if you're not sure, maybe just email um, someone on the panel and um, we can direct you um, to that email. But certainly becoming a member of the, network, of the Allied Health Network um, would be a really good first step. It was for me. Yeah, look, can I answer my own question with a, with a couple of my own top tips, two top tips? Uh, that we'd like to see, which is tell your mates in allied health. Tell your mates, uh, your fellow allied health practitioners, that our PHN is deeply committed to allied health, that we're deeply committed to growing our engagement with you, deeply committed to offering uh, CPD events that are tailored and targeted uh, for allied health. But we want to do more than just that. Because, you know, um, if you speak to the same people all the time, you know, it gets a bit ho-hum. But if you engage with your colleagues from general practice, uh, from other uh, health professions, it gets a lot more buzzy, it gets a lot more exciting, because then you can discuss uh, all the differences, but also all the commonalities. You also get a chance to network. And can I just say that that's one of the really uh, key things that we're trying to encourage uh, 
uh, in Central Eastern Sydney PHN is really around that op providing opportunity for networking. Okay, so it's not just about growing your business, it's also about getting that peer support. It's often can be fairly lonely at times uh, when you're an adult health practitioner, I've been there, uh, and being able to interact uh, with your colleagues, uh, with the other people in general practice, uh, with pharmacists are an absolutely uh, key plank of our, of our health system. That's also what we wanna try and do, is bring you all together, right? Now look, the other um, key area is of course, We've got, well, I'm spoiling now. I can't help it. We've got some, we've got a really strong uh, uh, community council made up of representatives from all walks of life, quite frankly, and all different professions. They are also uh, a really, uh, it's a really great committee to be part of. Uh, nominations are called for, uh, and we would welcome uh, allied health representation. The other area is around our clinical council. Uh, which also provides, in a way, a lot of direction uh, uh, for the PHN. Uh, very soon, uh, we're about to speak about aged care, amongst other things. I've been speaking a lot around COVID. I think they're a bit COVIDed out. Um, but we're going to move on to the area of aged care soon. Uh, and again, they will give me some good advice on that. Uh, they will give the PHN uh, some an agenda for change, hopefully. But that's where allied health can also uh, influence uh, things as well. And I think both the clinical uh, and the community councils are really important. The other top tip is this. We are always after people, allied health members, to sit on our different program advisory groups. Uh, so tonight, uh, we've had one around uh, aged care advisory group uh, that I wasn't able to attend tonight, but normally I chair that. Um, but that, that we meet with them. Uh, we've got uh, different groups across different range of chronic diseases uh, in population health, in mental health. Uh, those are paid for positions uh, that, that we meet. We, we pay people to attend those. We pay Allied Health to attend those. We think that's only right. But you get a chance to be involved in program design. Um, you get a chance to provide advice to us about how we can do things better, how we can make programs stronger. You also get a chance to interact with us uh, as PHNs, as PHN staff, senior staff are on those committees. So you get a chance to influence and change the agenda a bit, right? And those are the other ways, in addition to what Peggy said and what John said about how you can help, uh, if you like, uh, influence the allied health agenda, but also about getting some of that peer support uh, as well, All right? Now, I think we're coming very, very close uh, to time on this. Can I also say too, that we've got really strong links in with the local universities. Uh, we are blessed, if I can use that word, uh, with our major universities here. We're right in the center of so much academic action. Uh, we've got really strong networks into the allied health uh, professional disciplines. Uh, so again, it's very easy for us to put you in touch uh, with some of those. We're also uh, in our PHN, we actually employ a lot of allied health as well. <laughs> You'd be amazed at the number of staff from the PHN uh, who, who come from an allied health background. This is why when I was mentioning about, hey, let's develop up an allied health um, engagement framework, there were just lots of nods around the room. Um, so it's, it was a fairly easy sell, I have to say. Um, so again, very committed to doing that. And those are some of the other ways uh, in which uh, you can engage with a PHN. Look out for jobs, we're always after really uh, good people. And the allied health experience is really quite special because allied health see things from a systems point of view. They look at things widely across the healthcare system and in a way they're quite unique in that regard. Um, now Yvonne, can I ask, come back to you on a final uh, really concrete question. Uh, and hopefully this will be an easy one because it's getting a bit late at night. I don't want to put you on the spot. But if I'm an adult health person and I contact you guys on the email, on the phone, what can I expect? You can expect a response within a couple of hours, if not sooner. You can expect um, someone to talk to you about your business and what your needs are and possibly a follow-up Teams call 
or someone coming out to your practice to suit a time when you can actually talk about this further. Um, and that's how we actually do a lot of things. We actually check whether you've got proto accounts, whether you're APRA registered, uh, what systems you've already got, uh, what systems you've heard about. We make recommendations. We don't sell anything, but what we do know is we actually have quite a lot of knowledge, obviously, of healthcare providers in our region, what they use, how they're using it, and we can actually lead you on to hopefully supporting your business better and getting you more referrals. I think with the multidisciplinary care uh, case conferencing MBS items, it's definitely an opening for allied health to gain more GP referrals. Um, so definitely secure messaging is something that I would encourage um, to get on board with because there are online directories and Linda actually did explain quite a lot of that in more depth to you. Uh, but yes, we have happy to support you now and later and continually support you. We have done that for all GPs, pharmacies. We're going to do that for aged care and we will do that for um, specialists as well. You know, it's a really exciting time for Allied Health. I really feel that Allied Health is on the cusp. And in many respects, Yvonne, your team, Digital Health Team, are leading that charge. We've also got our practice support team who are incredibly smart around how to manage um, and, and, and work practices. Um, you know, we support a lot of GP uh, practice managers um, with workflows and that kind of thing. It's the same sort of deal with our light health. Our practice support team are there to support you as well. Uh, so, uh, and Yvonne and their practice support team are working incredibly closely together. It's like that. They trade information all the time. They trade solutions all the time. Um, so again, it's a, it's a real team approach. And that's the way it should be, quite frankly. It's how, it's how you provide care to your patients or you, to your clients, a team-based approach. That's pretty much what we do here at the PHN. And we tailor things uh, to you. Now, look, we're coming up to nearly uh, uh, 25 past eight. Um, can I make a final offer? All right, I feel like I'm a real estate salesman here, um, but can I say going once, but please put your name in the chat if you want some targeted support uh, from us. And can I say to you, what I'm gonna do is, Yvonne, sorry, I haven't told you this, but I'm gonna leave this open for a week, one week. Um, and what we'll do is, um, if you say you've heard about it on this webinar, uh, we'll put you in the first group uh, that'll get support, all right? So tell your friends, email us, uh, email us. Now, Yvonne, what's the best email that people can, can put through? Do you want to pop that in the chat? And just say something like, hey, I've heard about this wonderful offer on the webinar. We want some help, all right? Sure, I've actually just responded to a question and I put, I did a typo, so I do apologize. That's that. all right, Yvonne, it's late <laughs> at night and you've been working hard today, right? That's all right. Just retype it in. And so uh, if people can share the email address um, that Yvonne's going to type in, share it to your friends. And what we'll do is uh, we'll, uh, we, will, um, we will undertake to make sure that we get back to you uh, with a response about how we can then uh, really lock in an appointment uh, 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 for you and we'll come out and see your practice. We'll certainly give you a call and have a look at your arrangements and how we can best support. Again, tell your friends, word of mouth is incredibly important. All right? Uh, it's really, really important. Now, look, if there are no um, uh, further, uh, further questions, I'm happy to give you uh, five minutes back in your evening. Uh, can I say... Thank you to uh, all the panel members. Thank you for Peggy from your board for being uh, so gracious to uh, launch our Allied Health Engagement Strategy tonight. Thank you for your, your kind words. Uh, John, thank you for your leadership in Central East and Sydney Allied Health Network. Uh, Linda, you did a great presentation tonight. Uh, I learned things as well. So you might have to come around to my house with my TV. Um, Yvonne. Uh, thank you, as always, uh, for your leadership. Yvonne's uh, one of the true leaders in digital health amongst PHNs, and so we're incredibly grateful. I'd also like to thank the CPD team behind the scenes as well, who, uh, of course, continue to do their, their magic. Um, well, I shall let you go get back five minutes of your life, but thank you all for attending tonight um, and really appreciate that. Uh, we'll reach out to you, and um, 
and, and you've got the email address um, and share it amongst your friends and uh, we'll make sure that we can uh, provide some extra additional support to you uh, as allied health practitioners uh, so that you get real support and some real genuine, genuine value uh, from our PHN. Have a good evening, everyone, and thanks for attending tonight.